Hi guys, this is the uh, Zoom lecture for October 9th, for October 9th, and we are discussing chapter six, uh, specifically enzyme kinetics. Let me uh, turn on the screen share, turn on the screen share, and One second. Screen share. Okay. So we have derived the Michaelis Menten equation. We have derived the Michaelis Menten equation. And let me redraw this. Oops. Laser pointer, not what they want. I'm on a pen. Okay, so uh, V naught equals V max times S times S substrate concentration over Michaelis constant plus substrate concentration. So remember this graph, right? Basically what this tells us is that the enzyme reaches the, um, a point at which uh, regardless if you increase the uh, substrate concentration, the reaction rate will not increase. So the, uh, the enzyme reaches saturation, okay? And so what's important here is, um, so we talked about a line weaver Burke plot Right, so basically we take the reverse of the michaelis menten equation and we can calculate the values such as Vmax, uh, Km from this uh, slope, right? So we have a straight line. So we talked about that and I gave you some reading to do. And also uh, it's important to understand uh, some, some uh, um, extreme situations. So for example, so uh, let's say let me redraw this equation again. V naught V naught equals V max substrate concentration Km plus substrate concentration. Let's say, um, let's take two extreme, extreme situations. One in which um, substrate concentration is low. At low, a, at low substrate concentration. At low substrate concentration, V naught will equal, now this term here, substrate concentration can be uh, canceled, right? It's too small. And so V naught will be equal V max V max times substrate concentration over Km. And so it's gonna be this straight line here, right? So this straight line 
is going to be is going to represent the situation at which the substrate concentration is very small right now at high at high substrate concentration now you can ignore the um, km value right if you ignore the km value then v naught will equal v max right you ignore the km sorry you ignore the km s and s will cancel out and v naught will equal v max so um, depending on the situation in the cell and specifically um, substrate the amount of substrate present in the cell the michaelis menten equation can be uh, rewritten and can be simplified right so it's always good to keep that in mind okay so um let's talk a little more about km and vmax the uh, specific meaning of these two parameters So let's say in the Kalis Menten equation, let's say V naught will equal V max over two. V max over two. And we'll rewrite the right hand side part of it. Substrate. Km plus substrate. Km plus substrate. And if you further solve this for, K, uh, for Km, you will find is that Michaelis constant equals substrate, substrate concentration. So this, um, this is a practical definition of KM, okay? Which basically says that KM is a substrate concentration. Is a substrate concentration at which at which the rate is half maximal. So it's a practical definition. So for example, you know, by looking at uh, the KM, you can uh, compare in various KM between different enzymes, for example. You can say, okay, this enzyme operates at half maximal ability at this KM value, that one at that KM value. And um, and so uh, obviously the lower the substrate concentration, the more efficient the enzyme, right? So, um, let's see. Let's look at now at, um, so we have a different expression for KM. Remember KM was also, we could express KM using the rate constants. K2 plus K negative one over K1. Remember what these rate constants were, right? enzyme plus substrate you get k1 and enzyme and it's a reversible process the enzyme substrate complex formation which then leads to the actual reaction. 
through K2, and we get the enzyme plus product. So in many situations, now remember that K2 is the reaction constant. Reaction constant. Which involves the formation and cleavage of, of covalent bonds. So here, ES enzyme substrate complex, which is uh, non-covalent, will undergo the reaction where in which the substrate will be converted to the product, right? So it's a reaction constant. Whereas uh, K1 and K negative one are responsible are responsible for the non-covalent complex formation. For non-covalent non-covalent complex formation. So in general, when you form a non-covalent complex, the rate constant for this are much higher. Okay, so you don't break, you don't really need to break any covalent bonds. And so in general, in general, K2 will be rate limiting. In general, K2 is, remember RDS, rate determining step. Remember RDS from organic chemistry. Just hold on a second, guys. I'll give it to you later, so not right now. I give, I give it to Dario. Sorry, guys. So in general, K2 is the, uh, will be the rate determining step, okay? And uh, in which case, if the K2 is a uh, rate limiting, let's look at this equation here. Let's say K2 is small, then Km will be a ratio of the uh, dissociation from the enzyme and a, and a constant for the association when the substrate actually binds to the enzyme. And that is the dissociation constant, Kd. KD is the dissociation
is the dissociation constant. Okay, so that's for the KD. Okay, so uh, so basically you can look at the Michaelis constant, and by the magnitude you can uh, basically judge about the affinity of the substrate for the enzyme. Right. So the uh, if the KM is very low, in other words, dissociation constant is low, then you can say that the substrate has very high affinity for the enzyme. Now, not in all cases, but in most cases where the rate constant is, is small, right? So the reaction is slow, then the KM is the dissociation constant. Now, um, for the Vmax, if we follow this equation, right? So for the Vmax, since the reaction rate is reaction constant was so the second step is rate limiting the v max will be k2 times enzyme total right so in other words uh, you can um, imagine that the entire enzyme has formed the complex with the substrate right so basically all of the enzyme is tied in with this with the in the complex with the substrate, in which case uh, the Vmax will be K2 times ET, enzyme total. Uh, but that's again, not, not always the case. Remember I was telling you that uh, the, when the product forms, right? It doesn't mean that the product just simply falls off from the enzyme. The product can, can hang on to the um, active site and sit there and block the end active site uh, from the substrate formation and slow down the reaction, right? So let's look at the pos some possibility, the scenario in which uh, actually it's the product dissociation that is the uh, rate determinant step. Okay, say, say we have the following situation, eraser. Say we have the following situation. Enzyme plus substrate K one K negative one. This will form the enzyme substrate complex. This will then undergo the reaction with the K2 and the reaction will be reversible, K negative two. This will form the enzyme product. And and the product dissociation will be the rate limiting. In which case the Vmax 
is not the the actual the rate constant anymore. V max is the the dissociation of the product from the enzyme. Okay, and again. <clears throat> So let's say the entire enzyme is tied up together with the product and that's gonna give us the Vmax. So basically this will be the enzyme total, right? So the, all the enzyme is tied up with the, com with the complex formation with the product and um, the rate constant K3 will be basically the um, escape of the product from the active site. So if that's the case, um, so we don't really know which one of these will be the rate determinant anymore, right? So it's a much more general scenario. And uh, so uh, what we will do is we will, we will designate a rate constant, which is gonna be much more general, K cat. Basically, um, so the K-cat will describe the K-cat will describe the rate limiting Describe the rate limiting rate of any enzyme catalyzed reaction. any enzyme catalyzed reaction at saturation, right? So in other words, when we have to deal with the enzyme total, again, this is saturation, right? So when all the enzyme is saturated with the substrate, all the enzyme is saturated with the product, and that's what the Vmax will represent. So this is the rate at saturation. So uh, rate limit step of enzyme catalyzed reaction at saturation. So, so in other words, if we have a, a situation like this, right, the top one, then uh, K cat equals K3.
if we have the previous situation where the product dissociation was not an important factor, right? So the enzyme plus substrate, K1, K2, enzyme substrate, So it is not K2, this is K negative. This is K negative one. K negative one, this is K2. Enzyme plus product. <coughs> then K cat. equals K2. K cat equals K2. Okay. So in, uh, so K cat in general is a uh, first order first order rate constant First order rate constant. Um, and so it has the units of reciprocal time. Units of reciprocal time. units of reciprocal time and also uh, can also be called Chernova number. Also can be called Turnover number. So uh, basically, what this means is that it uh, corresponds to the number of molecules, number of molecules of substrate. converted to product converted to product in unit time.
Okay. So in other words, for example, um, e.g. Let's say 10,000 molecules per second, something like this. All right. And so finally, uh, what I would like to talk to you about is uh, how do we measure catalytic efficiency of the enzymes? So there are a number of parameters we have introduced. And so which ones are the most important ones? So let's look at um, those. And as you will see, both KCAT and KM are the key ones. So um, the ratio ratio of KCAT over KM is known as a specificity constant. specificity constant. So if you think about it, uh, let's say in, in, most, in most situations in cell, uh, substrate concentrations are actually quite small. Okay. And KM values are higher. If that's the case, then um, Michaelis Menten equation will be transformed be transformed to, uh, so basically if the substrate concentration is much smaller than the michaelis menten so the Michaelis constant, we can ignore this uh, component. And so um, V naught will equal K cat over Km. enzyme total substrate and so so the, the this ratio k cat over km now think about it uh, so k cat obviously the higher the k cat the higher the, the more efficient the enzyme right so in other words the um, the faster the reaction is going depend regardless of which redetermining step it is Right, it can be the uh, rate reaction, uh, the actual reaction rate constant, or it can be the association of the product from the active site. Regardless, so the higher the K cat, the more efficient the enzyme. Now, Km is a measure of basically how selective the enzyme is, right? So the lower the Km value, the higher the selectivity of the enzyme for a particular substrate. 
and the tighter the binding of a particular substrate to the enzyme. So, so these are kind of, uh, these two different terms are responsible for two different things, but both will contribute to the catalytic efficiency of the enzyme. And so, um, Uh, let's see. Um, so uh, K cat over K M is a measure of catalytic efficiency of enzymes. measure of the catalytic efficiency of the enzymes. So um, in general, um, obviously the higher this number is, uh, the more efficient the enzyme, but this number is diffusion controlled. Right, so if you think about it, The enzyme may be uh, working efficiently, right? Every time the enzyme finds a substrate, it will catalyze the reaction. But the substrate has to diffuse. The substrate has to find the enzyme in the reaction medium. is diffusion controlled, right? So the enzyme may be swimming there in this soup of uh, other macromolecules and never find the substrate. And so in which case, uh, regardless of how high this uh, K cat over K M value is, um, the reaction will not be catalyzed. So there is, up a, there is a limit as far as how, how efficient the enzymes can be. And so it is said that uh, some enzymes basically um, have achieved catalytic perfection. So for example, uh, let me give you some example. So acetylcholinesterase. Acetylcholinesterase. So the enzyme which hydrolyzes acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft, right? So um, remember, so the acetylcholine looks like this. It's a neurotransmitter. So this is an ester. Acetyl colon esterase, right? And so this enzyme will break down the ester of acetyl colon into colon and acetate ion. And so this enzyme has a uh, KCAT, KCAT value of 
a cat value of 1.4. times 10 to the fourth. Now this is in um, reciprocal seconds, like so. It has the Km value. Remember, um, Michaelis constant has the units of molarity. Km values of um, so molar nine to the ten to the negative fifth, and so the k cat over km K cat over Km so this the, the units are molar negative first now let me rewrite this Molar negative first, seconds negative first. And that's 1.6 times 10 to the eighth. So, so the enzymes that um, have K cat over Km values of that magnitude are said to have achieved catalytic perfection. Eight or nine. Negative one, second one, have achieved. Catalytic perfection. So basically what this means is that every time a substrate molecule finds an enzyme, basically bounces off the enzyme, a reaction occurs. Actually, this is amazing. Now think about it. So let's say the binding, the active site is one side of the molecule and a substrate hits a totally different opposite side of the molecule. And yet the enzyme found a way basically to grab this molecule, move it all the way around to the active site and make it undergo the reaction, right? Just think about how big the enzymes are, right? And so it's, it's very, very, I mean, the intu intuitively you would think that uh, the substrate has to actually hit the area close to the, to the active site, but that's not the case. The substrate has to hit any kind of area on the enzyme and the enzyme will basically develop mechanisms to grab this substrate and move it around and throw it into its active site and perform the reaction. Yeah, so the enzymes have evolved. That's why the enzymes are so big. That's why they've been around for such a long time. That's why there are so many amino acids. There are so many, so much diversity. And that's exactly what it is for, basically for the enzymes to function 
at their to be at their best basically to catalyze the reaction and hopefully achieve the catalytic perfection. Well, uh, on, on Monday, we'll talk about uh, inhib enzyme inhibition. We'll talk about the enzyme inhibition. And um, I will, in the discussion section, I will put some problems related to um, some of the um, Some of the uh, graph solving techniques, basically you, uh, line weaver, uh, line weaver pro, uh, Berg pro, um, problems and things like that for you to practice, even though you do have such problems in the sapling. Okay, well, um, hope you enjoyed the lecture. And um, I will talk to you on Monday.